Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Wreck Part 3, Genesis. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a wedding montage video being played, as a romantic Spanish song plays in the background. The video traces the bride and groom's childhood to their teenage years and young adult years, the time period they met. After a few cute pictures of the pair together, the montage abruptly ends. The film now shifts to footage from a handheld camera. A man is excitedly panning the camera around the crowded courtyard in front of a church. Today is the bride and groom's wedding day. It turns out, the man holding the camera is the groom, Koldo's teenage cousin. The ceremony is just about to start, and Koldo is greeting his guests and thanking them for coming. He approaches his friend, Rafa, a good-looking ladies' man. In fact, he even asks Koldo if the bride's attractive friend is coming to the wedding. The cousin turns his attention to the wedding videographer setting up his fancy equipment. He proudly explains that the camera he's using is the same one used in movie sets. Sensing the cousin's filmmaking passion, the videographer enlists his help in filming the guests' interactions during the wedding. Meanwhile, the bride called Clara still hasn't left her house. Her younger sister, who has her own video camera, finds her in the kitchen, looking queasy. She tells the sister that she has something serious to share with her, but she has to turn off her camera first. The sister obeys. The film cuts to the bride and her family already in a car, on the way to the church. Unlike earlier, Clara seems to be in better spirits. She smiles as her father compliments her look while on the phone. Back at the church, the cousin notices that one of the guests, a male veterinarian, has a bloody bandage on his hand. The man explains that he was bitten by a rabid dog earlier that day, which is shown in the previous episode. With the bride nearing the church, the guests all file inside to await her arrival. She steps inside the church, looking heavenly in her white wedding gown. Clara has tears in her eyes, as Coldo pledges his love for her. The happy couple seals their marriage with a kiss. Afterward, he surprises her with a serenade. The guests join in the song. The newlyweds jubilantly walk out of the church and are joyously celebrated by the guests. Outside, several buses are waiting to take all of them to the reception venue. The venue is an opulent courtyard and is complete with a string quartet and uniformed waiters passing out expensive food. The cousin films the bride and her parents laughing together. He offhandedly comments that the bride's mother is very attractive for her age. Meanwhile, Clara and Koldo have a brief moment together. She's about to tell him something, but it's now time for them to make their entrance at the reception. They walk inside the venue to boisterous music and they share another passionate tum massage. Later on, Clara gives a teary-eyed speech, thanking all the guests for celebrating their wedding day with them. Afterward, the bride and groom cut the huge white wedding cake. The party rages on as guests become drunker and drunker. Several of Koldo's friends tease Rafa for being rejected once again by Clara's gorgeous friend. The cousin interviews a waiter working as a children's mascot. He's dressed up like that because he was assigned to entertain the guest's children while the main party is going on. In the distance, the cousin notices police cars pulling up and men in hazmat suits outside the property. Clara and Koldo perform a fun choreographed first dance. They are later joined by their bridesmaids and groomsmen. Sometime later, Rafa finally convinces the girl to go someplace more private. The partygoers all gasp as the veterinarian, who now has deep red eyes, stumbles and falls from the balcony. He lands on the table and breaks it. An elderly woman tries to help him, but he just takes a bite from her neck. He stands up and appears to be fine. He starts attacking and biting more of the guests. Chaos ensues in the reception venue as the people he bites become infected with the mysterious zombie virus he has. The cousin nervously films everything that's going on until Koldo grabs him so they can run. Clara got separated from her husband, and he's now looking for her. Koldo and the four of them take shelter in the kitchen. Koldo notices that the videographer is still filming everything, so he smashes his camera. The wedding guest turns out to be a wedding crasher. He confesses that he's actually the copyright man, and his job is to snoop around at weddings and take note of the songs being played, so the bride and groom can be sued later on for copyright infringement. The group attempts to look for an exit, but there's no way out. The videographer kneels down and tries to unscrew a grill mail to the floor, but he drops the screwdriver. More and more zombies bang on the kitchen door. The cousin finds an opening in the ceiling that they can go through, but unfortunately, the videographer is too big to fit through it. He decides to stay behind, and the cousin promises that they will come back for him. With only the cousin's video camera as a light source, the four of them crawl through the opening and emerge into the street beside the venue. They approach a police car parked on the road. But there's a sexy female zombie inside, and she gets Koldo in a chokehold with her zombified muscles. The cousin helps him get rid of the annoying but sexy zombie, and copyright man steps in and finishes her zombified life. 
He gets inside the police car to call the authorities, but the dead policeman in the driver's seat comes back to life as a zombie officer and bites copyright man for a zombified law enforcement. He flails around as the policemen feast on him, and he accidentally presses the car siren, which alerts all the other zombies in the area to their location. Koldo and the two run toward the nearby woods. They take shelter inside a small church, where a small group of other wedding guests has hidden. Apparently, the zombies cannot enter the holy ground, so the church is a safe place. The PA system crackles to life, and they hear Clara's voice through the speakers. She informs Koldo that she has hidden in the video surveillance room with the priest. She also reveals that she found out the very morning that she's pregnant with Koldo's baby, not the zombies for sure. For a moment, Koldo is overjoyed by the news. But now, getting to Clara and keeping her and their baby safe is the priority. Koldo prays for God to show him the way, and when he opens his eyes, he sees that the church has a display of a full night suit. In the surveillance room, the priest tells Clara that the zombie epidemic is the Lord bringing down judgment on the world, like in the book of Genesis in the Bible, when he cursed disobedient angels to hell. Suddenly, zombies try to get inside the room. Clara locks the door, but the zombies are too strong, she hangs a cloth from the window, so she and the priest can climb down. They enter the ground floor of the building. At that moment, Koldo and a waiter, dressed in armor, storm inside the building. Clara sees a pale foot, sticking out from a couch in the den they're in. She thinks it's another zombie, but it turns out to just be Rafa and her friend, fresh from a hormone hide-and-seek game, and completely oblivious to what's going on. Koldo and the waiter walk through the corridors. The waiter gets attacked by a zombie hiding behind a curtain. Meanwhile, Clara and the others encounter a couple of zombie guests. Curiously, when the zombies are in front of a mirror, their reflections are grotesque demon-like ghouls. This confirms the priest's theory that the zombies are demons on Earth. Two of the zombies get a hold of the priest, but he recites a Catholic prayer, and this immobilizes the zombies. Kolbo gets to the surveillance room, but finds it empty. He watches through the security cameras, as his cousin leads a group of kids, including the sister, to the bus in the parking lot. However, zombies catch up to them, and they all get butchered. Rafa, Clara, and her friend find themselves in the garage of the building. They meet the mascot there, who tells them that there's a garage door that can use as an exit. While Rafa and the mascot are heating the door open, Clara and her friend have a heart-to-heart -heart talk, because they haven't seen each other for a long time and aren't really close anymore. But zombies once again trace their smell and get to their location, and kill the shitty friend before they can finish their girly talk. Clara manages to get out through the door, along with Rafa and the mascot. Outside, it has now started raining. The mascot remarks that he sees something down the road, and he and Rafa leave Clara behind to check it out. Clara's infected mother appears in front of her. She runs toward a frozen Clara, but luckily, the mascot shoots her. Clara cradles her dead mother in the pouring rain. More zombies come toward them, and they kill the mascot. Rafa and Clara run to a dark tunnel, but Clara refuses to leave without Koldo. Rafa tries to persuade her to escape with him, and he tells her that if Koldo is still alive, they would have known by now. At that moment, Koldo is in the destroyed banquet hall, where they had celebrated their marriage just hours earlier. He goes to the DJ booth and turns up the music playing in the speakers. Clara hears the song in the tunnel and takes it as a sign that Koldo is still alive. She grabs a chainsaw that is lying nearby, and she cuts her dress train off so she can walk more easily. Rafa decides to come with her instead of leaving. Koldo returns to the kitchen and finds the videographer dead. He had slit his wrists to avoid being eaten by zombies. Behind him is the zombie veterinarian. Koldo stabs him with a cleaver knife and pushes him to a metal table. But this doesn't stop the veterinarian, so Koldo finishes him off with a metal drill. Three zombies appear in the tunnel. Clara hacks through them with a chainsaw, but not before one of them bites Rafa. The infection quickly sets in and Clara is forced to kill Rafa before he turns into a zombie. While running through the tunnel, Clara hears Koldo's voice, coming through the grill grate on the kitchen floor. She climbs through a ladder and finally reunites with her husband. But they still can't open the grill, so Koldo instructs Clara to find the screwdriver that had fallen down the tunnel earlier. She finds the screwdriver, and Koldo gets to work on opening the grill. Zombies climb up the ladder and almost grab Clara. Koldo successfully unscrews the grill and hauls his wife up. But their troubles are far from over. Zombies are converging on them through the tunnel and the kitchen door. It dawns on them that they would most likely die in that room, but they are happy that at least they will die together. They bend their heads, close for a final tongue massage, and then suddenly, the priest's voice comes through the speakers. He's reciting passages from the Holy Bible, and this paralyzes the demon-possessed zombies, allowing Clara and Koldo to escape. They step out into the courtyard. 
The sun has now risen, and the zombies are still frozen by the sanctity of the priest's prayer. All except one. Koldo's infected grandfather is deaf, so he's immune to the priest's words. He springs into action and bites Clara's hand. Her wound immediately festers. She gets the idea to amputate her arm to stop the infection from spreading. Koldo does this using his sword. Clara screams in pain, and he ties a tourniquet around her arm to stop the bleeding. Outside the venue, authorities have set up a quarantine area to cordon off the place and its guests. Just before they reach the gate, Clara starts turning into a zombie. Her husband determinedly picks her up bridal style and takes her with him to the authorities' station. They all warn Koldo to let go of Clara because she's infected, but he loves her too much to let her go. They share one last tongue massage, but soon Clara completes her transformation. She bites off his tongue as a punishment for him daring to give the tongue massage to a zombie girl. Zombie Clara howls as Koldo steps back in shock. The authorities fire their guns and shower the couple with bullets. More blood gushes out of their bodies, and the force of the bullet wounds drops them to the ground. The movie ends with Koldo and Clara reaching for each other, longing for their last zombified hormonity as they lie dying. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.